Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we often sing this song. You're working it for our good. We even repeat the scriptures, Lord, that all things work out for our good. But Lord, right now we ask, what is our good? What is it that you will for us? What is it that you desire for us? And Lord, once we receive that answer, we pray that our will, our desires come into alignment with your will and your desires. Lord, bless us right now to be successful Christians you have called us to be. Empower us right now to be the men and women of God that you have called us to be. So Lord, as you are working things out for our good, help us understand our role in that. We pray that you continue to anoint us afresh to live the Christian life in this world, understanding that you are the Alpha and the Omega, that you are in control, that you are working things out for our good. So I pray that you anoint me to speak a word in season to your individuals, that you will increase as I decrease, that your voice will be louder than my voice, that you will receive the glory and the honor. Thank you for the ministers. Thank you for the singers, the band, the media department, for all those individuals that play a role in advancing the kingdom of God for your glory. So we ask that you continue touching the individuals watching this. Have your way right now. We surrender our minds and our hearts right here, right now, so that you will have your way. In Jesus' precious, precious name, amen and amen. Wow, this is, this is, this is awkward. My dad's not here. <laughs> oh, grace and peace, family, grace and peace. How in the world are you? I pray that you are doing great. I pray that you're doing well. And uh, this, is, this is different for me. Uh, so pray for me as you watch me struggle through my, my message. We have some housekeeping, you know, before I go into uh, my message. And just to let the team know, I'm left-handed. So this is set up for Dr. Bernard's right hand. I'm left-handed, so if we can n next time shift the things, I'm, uh, I'll be so much better and so much more comfortable and relaxed. So I I'm excited. Um, wow, God is so good. God is so good. We have Summerfest, and the Summerfest is uh, next month, and if you want to be a part of it, we're doing a virtual Summerfest. Even now, we're still working on not uh, our retreat, uh, picnics. We stopped doing our picnics because of corona, and we're trying to see what we can do to come back. But for now, we're trying to do something for the people. So this June, June, June 26 at 2 p.m., <laughs> we are having our Summerfest. Please come out and join. We're going to have fun. If you want more information, go to our website, cccinfo.org. Let me see. Make sure I have all my uh, notes and uh, things like that. I want to give a shout out to uh, Pastor William Thompson uh, and St. Peter's uh, Church for hanging out with us on our uh, service today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And all the other first-time visitors, welcome to CCC Online. Grace and peace and welcome. Now, Dr. Bernard, I bring you greetings from Dr. Bernard. He's out ministering. He will be uh, back with us next week. For, so for all those who uh, just logged on, just stay, stick around. I believe God has a word for you. Amen. Amen. So this, this, this month, I, I, I wanna, I, today I want to share some things with you. I want to be open and transparent, and I have some, some things to really share with you real quick. I'm not going to be uh, before you long. And I, I wrestled with what to minister. Uh, I had like maybe four or five different messages, and it, it just God really uh, checked my heart, and he gave me a word, I believe, for you for today. You know, my father asked me, he said, Jamal, what do you want to accomplish today? What do you want to do? And I said, I want to challenge the people. I want to challenge the people to really grab on to this whole idea of being resilient. I want to challenge the people to really uh, uh, 
grab on to this whole concept of moving forward. I told uh, the Long Island campus when we had our first gathering, I said, look, God, it is incumbent upon us as Christians to be resilient more than any other individual. Why? Because people are watching. People are watching what we do, how we do it, why we do what we do. And so resilience is a very necessary part of our life as individuals. And he said, he said, so, so and, and with that in mind, what's the first statement? So my first statement is, all success begins with a decision. I'll repeat that. All success begins with, with a decision. And I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, this prosperity gospel, because when you hear success, people often correlate it with prosperity, but it's, I'm not talking about prosperity. I'm talking about really being successful in who God has called you to be. Let's, you know, let's go to Genesis chapter 1, right? And, and what do I mean by success? God has created all creation to live to its maximum potential. God has created all creation to live to its maximum potential. And, what do I, uh, and my question is for you today is, what is your maximum potential? What is it that you can do at the next level to bring God the glory and to honor him? God created us, and, 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 and when we look at Genesis, Genesis 1, and I love Genesis 1 because Genesis 1 is unique. I tell people I love ministering from Genesis 1, and I often say this, and I will always say this, is that if you can't get past Genesis 1-1, then there's no need to continue to read the Bible. It becomes just a book of literature, right? Because Genesis 1, when God set the tone on all of our arguments, all of our conclusions, all of our discussions, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And I use this because uh, often individuals uh, ask, well, say, well, science and the Christian religion are not, you know, in work with each other. I said, no, that's not true. Let's go to Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And in order for you to have, you know, this thing called creation, this thing called, you know, what people want to say, the Big Bang, you need four things. You need time, space, matter, and energy. And when you look at Genesis, in the beginning, time, right, God, energy, created the heavens, space, and the earth matter. So I love that. I love this text. But we're going to continue reading because this text really speaks to who we are as individuals. And Genesis 1-1, and for the sake of time, I'm not going to go fully into it, but he, it, and this is Jamalism, right? Jamalism, and, and I love it. He says, he says, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He separated, you know, uh, he, he, he created out of chaos, right, order. You never see order come out of chaos unless a divine creature is, a divine being is really, has his hand on it at this level, at this magnitude. He created the, the heavens and the earth. He created, you know, he separated the waters and put, created the boundaries from the land. He uh, created plants, trees. He said, let every uh, plant and tree bear fruit out of it, uh, 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 after itself. He created animals. He said, let all the animals, uh, you know, uh, bear uh, animals after itself. And this is Jamalism. And then he says, let us create man. He created man in his image. And then, you know, so people ask, okay, why did God create man? And I believe that there's a couple of things that we can answer with that, with that statement. And the first statement I would say is God created man to, number one, reflect God's character in the world. Number one, to reflect God's character in the world. And this is why I challenge you to be resilient, because a part of being resilient, and you're, you're showing yourself as a Christian that no matter what, God is in control, and I'm okay with that. So, number one, reflect God's character in this world. Number two, to be representatives of God's rule in the world on his behalf. So, there's a lot going on. And, you know, and, and if you were part of the spiritual war class, you understand that these beings were watching God make a decision on what he's going to do and what he's going to allow humans to, uh, to be able to do. So reflect God's character, be representative of God's rule in the world on his behalf. And this is the, the major part. Harness creation, potential, and create beauty in order to make a place where more life can flourish. Once again, to harness creation's potential and create beauty in order to make it a place where more life can flourish. And that's significant because some people say, well, you know, looking at the, the whole th issue with Israel, Palestine, and what's going on with that. And they say, well, is this the end time? Is this the end of the world? And I say, you know, 
I said, it doesn't matter if it's the end time, if, it, if it's the end of the world. The question is, are you ready? Two, Jesus even said, he said, no man knows the hour of the time, so stop asking me if this is the time. I don't know the time. God, Jesus didn't know the time. He didn't express, uh, express the time. But the, the fact is that these two countries are warring. Where is the love and respect and dignity of the life of the human individual? That's a different story. Number three, to harness creation's potential and create beauty in order to make it a place where more life flourishes. And this concept starts at home. But we understand that we are, we, we, it's difficult to do this because, like Dr. Bernard said last week, we are broken. We are wounded, we are dysfunctional, and we are disordered. So what do we try to do? We try to accomplish, and you see that throughout the history of mankind, we try to accomplish certain things that leads us to a place where we can accomplish God's purpose and reason for us to exist. And, and I love this because when we look at our brokenness, we're still trying to be resilient out of our brokenness. We're still trying to be resilient out of our woundedness. We're still trying to be resilient out of our, our dysfunction and our disorder. But God has given us a command to do certain things. And I'm excited about this message that I'm about to really share with you because as, as we look at the time and what we, where we are, this is May, fifth month of the year. And usually April is a time where, we, where, where people who you know, started with their New Year's resolution, the average person, some people quit the day after uh, New Year's Eve. Uh, you know, New Year's Day, they quit already. Uh, this is where we said we're going to set goals. We're going to look to accomplish certain things. And this is the point where I believe we are being, we're going to be challenged with our resiliency. You know, to come back to do some of the things that we were supposed to do. And remember, your resilience is your ability and capacity to rebound from a difficult time from a failure, or from a loss. Your ability and capacity to rebound, and this is a simple, quick definition. Your, your ability and capacity to rebound from a failure and a loss. And I forgot what I said before that, but don't judge me. <laughs> and at this point, this is where I have discovered from a book I was reading, and a part of this is, 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 is understanding that there are two types of resilient individuals. Two types of resilient individuals. I was going to write on the board, but um, yeah, I'm not going to write, so just take good notes. <laughs> the first resilient person is what we call the pusher, and I'm not talking about the drug dealer. And I wrestled with trying to think of a, a name and, 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 and a better description of this person, but it was difficult because this statement really speaks to individuals and what they're going through. So here it is, we're at this part of the year where we are challenged with quitting or keep on going. And this individual, the first individual that we're going to talk about is what we call the, the pusher. And this person decides to push against this thing called the dip. And the dip comes from the con this concept uh, of, from a book called The Dip. You can check it out. It's a very good book, quick, easy read. Uh, and uh, Seth Godin is the author of this book. And basically, Seth Godin says that there are individuals, every, every dreamer, every visionary, every pathfinder, every trailblazer hits this point in their life. Every individual, once again, every visionary, every dreamer, every pathfinder, every trailblazer, and et cetera, hits this place in their life, especially when they are about to engage in something they believe they're called to do. We're going to speak from a Christian perspective, and I believe that God has called a lot of us to do certain things that 2020 has disrupted. I believe that God has called a lot of us to do certain things that, that, that corona has disrupted. I believe that a lot of us have been called to do certain things that self has disrupted. I believe that God has called a lot of us to do certain things that relationships have disrupted. And this dip is a place where the, the contemplation, right? Because in the beginning, when we get an idea, we get a vision, we get excited, like, yes, this is good. Uh, you start sharing it, you know, Habakkuk 2, 2, write the vision down and make it plain. You start sharing it, you wrote the vision down, you're excited about this. You start gathering individuals, you got a team behind you, you got people praying for you, and then you get to a place where now you're feeling lonely. 
Now you're feeling frustrated. Now you're feeling lost. Now you're feeling tired. Now you're feeling you know, that, that you start second-guessing what you believe God has called you to do. And it's at this place, this, this thing called the dip, where now quitting is a possible outcome. Where quitting becomes an option. In the beginning, quitting was not even an option. I'll do whatever I have to do. I will, you know, to, to the point where you start changing your budget in order to respond to the very thing that God has called you to do. You start changing your relationships to respond because, you know, not everybody can, uh, is mature enough to occupy a space or the next space you're about to enter into. And here it is. You get to this place called the dip. And the question is, are you going to push through or are you going to quit? See, that first type of resilient person called the pusher says, no, I'm going to lean into the dip. That person says, no, I'm going to lean into this desire to quit and push through. I'm going to become a pusher. I'm going to be the individual that does not allow tension to determine my path. I say that again. I'm going to become that person that does not allow tension to determine my path. Often we allow tension to determine our path because tension makes us uncomfortable. Often we allow tension to determine the steps we take because it makes us feel uncomfortable. But when you read a lot of these successful stories, it is tension becomes that birthing place for the new idea. Tension becomes that birthing place for that push. And instead, God continues, and he writes this, and he says, a lot, of, a, lot, a, a lot of individuals often read success stories and motivational quotes, and, they, and he brought up Vince Lombardi, and he said, Vince Lombardi said that winners never quit and quitters never win. And he said, it's the opposite he said, a, a person who pushes through the dip is a person who knows what to quit and when to quit it. Sometimes when we start out, we have a whole lot of individuals in our corner. We have a whole lot of ideas in our corner, and we try to take all of those individuals with us, and that becomes a burden, a place of burden for us where we can't push through the dip. And Seth Godin says, the first thing you got to do when you're pushing through the dip is know what to quit and when to quit it. See, quitting certain things doesn't make you a quitter. I can continue going on, but for the sake of time, the second type of person is what we call the overcomer. And I love this because the Bible calls us overcomers. He's not only are we overcomers, but we are more than overcomers. And people love to, to quote that text, like, oh, we're more than overcomers. Greater is he that's in me than, than he that is in the world. I am the head and not the tail. But let me tell you something. In order for you to be the overcomer, this has to be something for you to overcome. In order for you to be the overcomer, there has to be something for you to overcome. And let me give you a working definition for overcomer. And I love this definition because this really sets the, the, the perspective and where we're going with this. See, the overcomer is one who succeeds in dealing with or gaining control of some problem or difficulty. Once again, an overcomer is one who succeeds in dealing with or gaining control of some problem or difficulty. An overcomer is a person that does not allow their failures to define them. An overcomer is an individual that knows in order to embrace the future, you have to resolve and let go of the past. An overcomer is a person who is persistent even if they have met failure. See, the difference between the push and the overcomer, the overcomer is the one who, who they, they, they met failure. 
They, they, they created a, a business venture and it failed. But that didn't stop them. An overcomer is a person who, 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 who dealt with death and understood that death cannot be the resting place. You know, in order to possess these qualities, first you have to know how to be resilient. And some people say, well, Pastor Jamal, you ask me, you're telling me I need to be resilient. What does, what does being resilient look like? And, and, and let me give you the best example, Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter, uh, and I love this text because I, I, when, I, when I first read it, you know, years ago, I, I said, this is good, this hits home. But I read it again. Let's go to verse 36, chapter 26, verse 36. And it reads this, it says, Then Jesus went to the, with them to the olive grove, called Gethsemane. And he said, sit here while I go over here to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. So one of the things that you need to know is one, how to be resilient, is to have a camp behind you that's praying for you. See, but the, the ironic thing is, just because you have a camp praying for you doesn't mean they're going to be able to pray through the difficulties for you. Jesus had these individuals. He said, pray, sit here, watch, stay watched, be vigilant. He gave them certain d- directives. But the mere fact is that, that per- Jesus had to end up praying by himself. Because sometimes the individuals that's in your camp can't handle the length of time that you need for that prayer, for that breakthrough. I'll say that again. Sometimes you have to understand that people in your camp, not, they're not bad because they, they, they fell asleep. They just can't endure where you need to endure. And then he gets down to, to uh, verse 38, and this is where it really is profound. He said, he told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He was going through. He, was, he, he, he is facing the cross. He's facing this torture. He's going through. And sometimes we go through. See, but the overcomer says, no, I'm going to make it past this. I'm going to make that scripture true to me as an individual. I am more than an overcomer. I'm not just a basic overcomer. So when we look at this, in the notes, I put how to be resilient. Number one, know what to quit, when to quit it. Number one, know what to quit, when to quit it. Number two, constant Self-reflection. And a part of that self-reflection is saying, okay, what role did I play in where I am today? Number three, allow your vision and or dreams continue to continually energize you. Allow your vision and or your dreams to continually energize you. Sometimes we got to go back to that place where we had that first idea and grab energy because where we are right now, we're tired. We can't go on. We're ready to quit. Number four, refocus your energy. Often we fail because we have our focus in the wrong area. Refocus your energy. And number five, don't quit, re-strategize. And what do I mean by that? I got a, I'm glad you asked. I got a story, and I'm going to try to tell it in this quick uh, 10 minutes. So one morning I wake up, and it was a good morning. Nice, bright, sunny day. The birds are chirping. Little, little mist of, 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 of water or dew on the grass. 
You know, one of those nice sunny days, like you got that good stretch in the morning, you know, sun is bright. One of those days that you just smell summer coming in the air. And it's right there. And, 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 and so I wake up, you know, I thank God, so I you know, get into my worship, my prayer. And it's one of those good prayer times. You know, I was just in the Word. God was doing some things. I was worshiping. It was one of those points where I, 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 I got to a place where I cried because of the awe of God. The presence of God was just so there. It was so deep and profound. It was, it was really a moving time for me. And I'm excited. God is doing a lot of stuff. Things are lining in my life. Things are moving smooth in my life. I said, okay, let me go, you know, go. I went to the gym, had a good workout, you know, a good pump, you know, lifted, you know, some heavy weight. I was excited. Things were going good. I'm telling you, this is one of those good mornings. So it was so good that you start questioning, okay, why is this morning so good? I know some of us have had that, uh, that, that, those questions where, okay, things are going too good. And I go, we get to the office, I'm working, my father and I, we're, we're talking, and, and, and this, is, this, is, this is around March of last year. And as, as you know, we're, we're talking, we're getting things ready, and my father asked me, he says, how is the Orlando campus going? I said, man, it's going good, things are going good. And, and, and this is when you know, because sometimes you, know, you, you, you believe that God has you know, called you to do things, and as you're doing it, certain things aren't in place and things like that. But for the Orlando campus, things were in place. Relationships were being built. Ministers were, 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 were coming to support. Things were moving smooth. I was going down to Orlando for over a year, once a month, doing uh, services on Tuesdays with the, with the individuals. Uh, we had a praise and worship team. We got, got the band together. So many things were coming together. We were excited about what, happened, what was happening. We had two services already on Sunday, and they were, they were full because individuals were coming to support. We were meeting the needs of our individuals who have relocated to Orlando or the Central Florida area. Things were going good. I got, we got, like I said, ministers lined up to help uh, take the burden off of, off of me. We had a leadership team that was working behind the scenes to get things going. We were already doing community service. We were uh, doing backpack, back to school events. We were setting up food drives. We had so many things going on. Like Orlando was a church. We didn't have the building yet. But it was a church. Things were moving smooth. I was excited. I took a point where I said, babe, we might need to move down Orlando. My dad said, no. <laughs> he said, you're not going to be able to enjoy that nice weather before I enjoy it. You know, and, and I said, well, you know, God is so good. If you, know, if you want to do that, Dr. Bernard, it might be too hot for you. I think, I think I'm designed more for that nice weather. You know, and we started joking around and, and laughing and stuff like that. And here it is. It was a Tuesday around 11 o'clock. We go in. And my father, he says, son, look what I got for you. And look, I'm excited. I'm like, okay, you know, usually my dad says uh, when we have to meet, it's business. But this time he was excited. And, and sometimes when you, start, you have an idea and you're excited about certain things, it's just other individuals who are happy for you get even more excited sometimes than you. And my dad came and he said, come in the office. And he said, look what I have. And it was a contract for a new building. Mind you, we, will look, we looked at over 100 pieces of property trying to find a building for the Orlando campus, and we have it, a contract, ready to be signed. I was excited. And here it is. Not only do we have the contract, but because things are going smooth and we have very, uh, uh, a, a very good momentum going in Orlando, we have people donating to the Orlando campus. People were fully committed. They said, no, we're going to donate uh, to CCC, but we're going to really focus on building the Orlando campus. And this is what I'm talking about. You got I, God lined up so many different things. We had people who, who said they were called to support financially the, the, the birthing of the Orlando campus. This is what I'm talking about. You know, God, you know, things were lined up. So I knew that I knew that I knew that this was God. At this point, I knew that I knew that I knew it was God. God had everything in place necessary for us to launch that Orlando campus. And he said, look at this. And I'm looking at this. And, oh, this is great. This is exciting. He said, here's the pen. You know, so I got even more excited. And I said, okay, I'm signing the contract? He said, yes. So I, I signed the contract. And he said, look, this is the routing number. Everything's ready to click over. And all of a sudden, I heard over my ear, look at the TV. And here comes my nephew. I think it was my nephew. I'm trying to remember the story. And they turned the TV on, and here on the TV was CNN. 
and they were talking about the coronavirus. And they said, we got a special announcement. And here it is. The president gets on and says, we're going to have to shut down America. We don't know how for how long. And all my dreams, energy, ideas, excitement went out the window. I got frustrated. And my dad looked at me, you know, and, and my, when he asked certain questions, I know it's a test. And he said, he looked at me, he says, so what are we going to do? <laughs> I said, I know what to do, but I don't want to do it. I don't, I don't want to say, I know what we need to do. Because I'm looking at that contract on the desk. And I said, am I going to let my pride and emotions get in the way? Or am, am I going to make the right decision? And, and I know it was a test. Now, but back then, I, oh, man. Talking about a crushing feeling. Talking about a, a letdown. And I said, you know, because God has called us to be proper stewards, I think we're going to have to hold off on this. And he said, so we're not going to go through with it. I said, no, we're not going to go through with it. We're going to have to call them and say we can't go through with it. And it was difficult for me. My body got hot. I got, like, you know, it was like a little weak in the knees because I swore that God called me to do this. I swore because of how everything was lined up, put in place, that this was called by God. And I know many of us have gone through this process where we know that God has called us to do it, and all of a sudden, we, got, we hit this brick wall. All of a sudden, we hit, we hit these locked doors. All of a sudden, we hit a place where we don't see and out. We don't see uh, the, 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 the road. We don't see the, the, the stairs. We don't see the next step because we got hit with a, a load of bricks called the shutdown. And I went through, I won't say depression, but I went through. I, got, I, I, I had no more passion for the, the Orlando campus. It, it, it rocked me. It, it really messed me up. I stopped calling the team. Stopped looking for, for property. Stopped, you know, meeting with the Orlando campus. It, I really went through it. It, it really messed me up. Because you got to understand how many things I had to say no to in order to say yes to building this campus? How many events I missed with my kids? How many, you know, how many uh, uh, times I wasn't there to see certain milestones in my youngest daughter's life? How many things I was not present for because I was pursuing what I thought God had called me to do, and all of a sudden, it got stripped from me, what I thought. You know, so time went on, and this is why you need people in your life. I have, I have a, a, one of the ministers down there, Sheldon. He called me. He said, he said, he said, PJ, how are you doing? I said, I'm good. You know, not letting off, you know, my frustration, my disappointment. You know, uh, I said, I'm good. He said, well, what's going on with the Orlando campus? I said, well, you know, we can't do anything. Uh, the, the coronavirus is here. Can't travel down there. Things are really shut down. He said, he said no, let's go. He said, remember this thing I taught you called the battle rhythm. And the battle rhythm is just a military term to talk about the rhythm in which they move towards the cadence of consistency of reaching their goal. Whatever the goal is, it's a battle rhythm. I said, Sheldon, you're right. And I, and I, and I, and I felt the check. And he said, PJ, did God call you? To this, I said, yeah, God called me to this. He said, is this ordained by God? I believe it's ordained by God. I said, I questioned it with, you know, with the shutdown. I believed it was ordained by God. And he said, and if you believe it's ordained by God, how dare you quit? And I said, man of God, you're right. I said, you're absolutely right. And this is why it's keyed to have true, authentic individuals in your life. Because the true, authentic individuals will tell you the truth will pull you on the carpet with respect to get you moving again. And I said, you're right, minister. I said, what, what's, what's next? He said, we're going to meet with the team, and we're going to re-strategize. He said, we're going to meet with te the team, and we're going to refocus. 
We're going to meet with the team and look at what we need to change and quit. We're going to meet with the team and go back to the vision and re-energize ourselves of what God has called you to do and the vision he placed in your heart. I said, man of God, you're right. I said, let's get it going. And all of a sudden, things started falling into place again. Things started getting organized again. We started meeting consistent with the team. And now we have the rest of this year already set up with Tuesday meetings. And we're already talking about how does it look to go back into the building? What does service look like for the Orlando campus? We're doing community service. We're feeding the homeless. We're, we're feeding the, uh, the disenfranchised. We are uh, working on back to school backpacks. For so things are moving towards. And sometimes the vision that God blesses you with needs to be just changed a little, but not abandoned. Sometimes, I'll say this again, sometimes the vision that God has placed in your heart needs to be altered a little based on the context of where he had called you to be, but not abandoned. Once again, I'll say this again. Sometimes the vision that God has called you to just needs a little alterations, but not an abandonment. And some of you watching this have abandoned things that God has called you to be because you didn't push through, because you didn't believe you were an overcomer. Remember I said this in the beginning of the year. Every resilient person understands that that tragedy, suffering, does not discriminate. I also told you that, that, that resilient people know what and where to focus their energy. I also said that resilient people ask themselves, is what I'm doing hurting or helping myself and the others that depend on me? And the last thing I said is, all resilient individuals know their why. Yes, we're broken, we're wounded. Sometimes we operate from a dysfunction. Sometimes we operate from a disorder. But I believe if we wholeheartedly hand over to God, what he has called us to do and leave it in God's hands and be prepared to move when God says move, things will work out for your good. See, too often we, God gives us a vision and we hold it on ourselves and do it on our own accord. But no, God gives you the vision. Give it back to God and say, okay, God, what are we doing with this? See, I wanted to quit the Orlando campus. But I believe that there's something that CCC does and we do it well. And God is calling us to bring it to the Orlando campus, to Atlanta, to South Carolina, to North Carolina. God is calling us. And I can't quit because it's bigger than Pastor Jamal's feelings. It's bigger than Pastor Jamal's frustrations. It's bigger than Pastor Jamal. Your vision that God has given you is bigger than you. I pray that you look and self-reflect and you come to a realization to say, okay, I got to get up. I pray that you, 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 you look at yourself and reflect and say, okay, I got to push through. Either I'm going to be an overcomer or a quitter. Either I'm going to become a pusher or a quitter. The decision's up to you. But I believe God has called you to do something that's bigger and better. We can go back to the text I started out with. In the beginning, God. Go back to. In the beginning, God, he gave me this vision. In the beginning, God gave me this dream. No matter what it is, if it's a marriage, you're ready to quit. Was it ordained by God? Is it, a, is it a, 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 a business venture you were ready to quit? Did God call you to do it? There's something that you, God has called you to do 
that is sitting on a shelf and you need to take it off the shelf. Dust it off and get going. I pray that this ministered to, minister to you. I pray that this sparked some energy back in your life and say, no, I'm making a decision today, right here, right now, to either be an overcomer or a pusher. I'm not going to be a quitter. We have a minister that's going to pray with you. And after the minister is finished, I'll come back with some closing words. Praise God that no disaster can frustrate the purposes of God. Someone watching today has been feeling a battle rhythm all your life, but you may not understand who's leading the march. Pastor Jamal said that all success starts with a decision, and now we have the opportunity to make the most important decision of our lives. You may be experiencing a dip today, or you may feel like you've been in one all your life. Your dip may have become a rut, may have become a ditch, and today God's invitation is to pull you out. You may have tried to push through but found you were spinning your wheels. You may be an overcomer who has always gained control, always transcended failure, but we cannot overcome our sin. We cannot transcend our brokenness. For that, we need the gospel. We need some good news. The good news today is that a holy God so loved a rebellious world that he sent his only begotten son to live a sinless life, die in our place, and rise from the grave, conquering death. And in doing so, he paid the price for our sin and gives us a right to everlasting life. The good news is that we can know him today. The good news is that our failures do not define us because God has designed us for resilience. The good news is we have all sinned, but Christ paid the price for us. It is a gift. We couldn't earn it, but we still have to accept it. So how do we do it? Romans 10.9 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you'd like to do that, just repeat after me. Father, I repent of my sin. I believe Christ died on the cross and rose again to pay the price for my sin. I confess him as Lord and Savior. And your word says, I'm born again. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Family, we believe if you prayed that prayer, you are now born again. But change is not an event, it's a process. Now the journey in Christ begins. Now we get to be representatives of God's rule in the world. And to represent his rule, we need to know his rules. Now we reflect his character, which means we need to study and spend time with him to become more like him. Now we create beauty which means we get to discover with God's hands upon us what our gifts, talents, and abilities are for and what we were created to do. We have some information we'd like to give you, so text or call the number on the screen. May God continue to bless you. Your life will never be the same. Amen, amen. Welcome to the family of believers. If you pray that prayer for the first time, second time, or third time, fourth time, fifth time, if you were like my, one of my brothers, he, got, he went to every altar call, I want you to text SAVED at 631-250-2688 or you can call 718-306-1061. As I close, I just want to tell a quick story about this young man. I was, uh, as I was preparing my nephew is watching uh, AAU basketball. He loves basketball. I give a shout out to my, my nephew. <laughs> and there was a young man who was playing, and he was getting busy. He was doing his thing, and he had one arm. And he just got signed to a Division I school. And I looked at the story, and I said, you know, what's his story? And he says, well, first of all, the story starts out, says, the young basketball player, 17-year-old, gives God the glory. He said, he thanks God for his tragedy. 
because he still has a skill set that he's utilizing. He just had to learn how to use it in a different way. So this young man, he said he was six years old in the Dominican Republic, and a wall fell on his arm, and the, and the wall uh, as, was sitting on his arm for two hours, and because of the length of time, they had to amputate from the shoulder down. And now he is 17 years old and one of the most sought-after basketball players with one arm because he did not allow that situation to define him. He did not allow that situation to determine him doing what God has called him to do. Often we, 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 we feel that we've lost too much to keep going. And if God makes all things, not some things, not a couple of things, but all things. So that means that you're good, you're bad, and you're ugly. Still, he'll turn around for your good. Father God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to sit in freedom and worship you. We thank you for the opportunity to sit in freedom and read the scriptures without condemnation or threat of death. So Lord, we ask for forgiveness for even quitting if we've quit something you have called us to do. We ask for forgiveness for even contemplating turning our back on whether it's a marriage, whether it's a business venture, whether even if it's down to a relationship you have called us to be a part of, we ask that you have your way and anoint us afresh. Give us new sight, a new perspective on the vision you have called us to do. Give us the desire and the will to quit the things necessary that we need to quit and understand the timing that we need to move in. Lord, give us the, the energy from that vision and then allow us to rededicate ourselves and this vision to you. Lord, help us stay focused. We ask that you just have your way right now so that we can move towards a mark that you have called us to move towards. Lord, I pray and ask that you have your way. Anoint us afresh. Protect us throughout this week as we travel. Even for tomorrow as we go and visit family and friends, we ask that you have your way. Bless us with a tongue in, uh, bless us with a word on the tip of our tongue in season for whoever we might encounter at the family barbecue, at the family gathering, at the friends and family gatherings. So that we can speak words in season, words of encouragement, be salt and light, a fragrance and not an odor. We ask that you have your way. Protect us. God, God, and govern our paths. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Well, I pray that you receive something from today. I pray that you will take this and, 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 and just go through a process of self-reflection uh, and say, okay, no, there's some things that I need to do. There's some things that I have put on the shelf. And I need to take it off the shelf and get the dust off because God has called me to do certain things. And, well, as we leave this place but never God's presence. Jesus is Lord, period. We believe it, we proclaim it, and we're seeing it come to pass. God bless and enjoy the rest of your week.